this is the church of the Milky Grotto. Guys, as I've mentioned in the beginning, uh, this is traditionally rather than biblically connected with the birth event of Jesus Christ. You know, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, stated that following the arrival of the three wise men, the three magicians, to the city of Jerusalem, the first person they got met with was whom? Herod the Great. Herod the Great, he didn't like the idea of another competing king among the Jewish nation. So he sent all soldiers to the very night to kill all infant children of two years and under. And during that very night, the Almighty God sent his angel to Joseph and Mary in that cave that we call the cave of Nativity, warning him to take the child and his mother and took off to Egypt because the child is in danger. So on their way, Mother Mary stopped into this very cave. It lies almost 100 to 120 meters southeast of the city of Bethlehem and the Church of Nativity as well. And they went down there, hiding from those Roman soldiers. And while she was staying there, it was the time for the infant child to have some food. While Mother Mary was breastfeeding the infant child, some drops of her milk fell to the floor, trickling, and turning, all of a sudden, turning the red rock into white. Into white. And since ever, people start believing that the rock itself is having some sort of a healing power. Since ever, people start frequenting the place, taking this part of the rock itself. Believing has healing powers. Some would place him under the pillows, believing have, you know, uh, healing of not to have children. Others will place it with their drinks for the pregnant woman to increase their milk production. And Muslims and Christians alike would frequent this place to pray for God to give us rain. Now, since the 4th century, we had this huge monastery constructed at the top of the cave until it was destroyed by the Persians in 614, renovated, rebuilt by the such a famous Christian local family by the name Hasborn. You see the name at the top? Yeah. And this family is really famous with carvings, sculpture. Look at this. Right. You can see every single detail of the faces here. It's just the same wood that you're going to see, it's the carving wood, the olive carving wood, and that gift shop at the end of the tour. Here we see the scene of flight to Egypt or flight to Egypt and the scene of the nativity. All right? Here's the front side of the church, and at the top, we read, Mother of God, pray for us, you know, because this is a Roman Catholic church followers, and here's the sign of the cross, the Jerusalem cross, remember, such a famous thing, a simple people can get as a souvenir from the Holy Land, and here we see two hands. The bare hand represents Jesus the Christ, and the clothed hand represents the arm of Francis the Cisian, who is the founder of the Franciscan system order. Guys, we're going down now, 10 meters down from the main level of this main street, and we're going to see this beautiful decorated church of the Milky Grotto, and we're going to visit that cave itself where this miraculous adventure was. Ready? It's Dedication for Mesa Abdullah Hazbur and his children, the 12th of November 1938. 34. Mm. Man, no heads, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. How are you? Thanks, God. Thanks, God. I'm fine. So good to see you. Thank God. And I will talk about the powder in a few minutes. Yeah, but uh, it's so good to see you. I know. All right. Okay, my friends. Let me say this. This is a good example of the underground caves. It was the first century Jewish houses. Take a look here. Here was the living room. And here's the place where this miraculous event took place. And you can see the swap turning, turn rock from red to white. 
That's an amazing thing. And I'd like to add one thing. Do you see those petitions? Pa pieces of papers? That's just, you know, prayer petitions, uh, you know, spread by the high priest during Sunday services, which reminds us of the Jewish practices as it went into the rainy pool as they set those prayers among the cracks of the wall. Yes. So it's become a Christian practice as well, okay? If you have, like, friends or relatives, they need you to mention the names in these locations. That's what the people do, just throw these pieces of papers behind that thing for the priest to read during service masses. Okay, now guys, before we leave this place, this is a good example of where Jesus was born in. That's not the very place where he was born, but this is the place where his mother Mary nursed him, okay? And what I'm saying that this was the living room. This was the kitchen side. I'm just standing underneath the chimney for the smoke to leave out. And the guest room. Yes, the place where people used to receive their guests. That's why Mother Mary was taken by St. Joseph away from the crowd into that very place where she gave birth. I'm not saying that that's the very place Jesus No, I'm saying that's just a good example of the underground case of the first century. Okay? Um, because I'm taking so many.